All right, so I'm, I, we talked about a little bit of this already, but uh, just a little bit about me. I'm the worship pastor at Heritage Baptist Church here in Lynchburg. Moved here over the summer, um, so it's cool to be back in Lynchburg after 20-some years. Um, started at Heritage on September 18th. Um, I mentioned I have a sophomore here at Liberty. She's a zoo and wildlife biology major. She's our oldest. She's 20. We also have a middle daughter, Sarah. If you go to Cracker Barrel, uh, she works in the retail area in the store. She's about this tall and blonde, a mm -hmm. uh, cashier. Um, she graduated from high school in North Carolina, where we lived, um, and is just kind of working right now, saving up money to take classes. And we have a junior in high school. Um, Ethan is a junior in high school at uh, Jefferson Forest High School. So just wanted to introduce myself. Um, grew up in a musical family, did a lot of singing, from a young age, um, been in full-time worship ministry for about 22 years. Across that time, I have done voice lessons with different people, um, you know, whether it was a high school student that wanted to learn to sing harmony or just improve vocal, but, you know, more of a, not in this necessarily an organized way. Um, I graduated this past May from Liberty again with uh, a Master of Arts in Music and Worship where I was exposed, Dr. Greenwalt was my teacher, and um, was exposed to um, the Blaylock method of vocal instruction, and um, that's the method that I know. I actually, after my applied lessons uh, here at Liberty, I sought out Tom Blaylock, who, hence the name Blaylock Voice Method. He's in Beaverton, Oregon, and I studied with him privately via video uh, for about six or eight months and kind of got, I guess I got certified in his method. That's still a little mystery. I don't have like a, the certificate or whatever, but um, I think, talk yeah, see, see what the, see what's going on. exactly. I think I'm sort of close, at least I, I've got most of it, but I will be continuing my education with Dr. Greenwald on Mondays. I will be coming and being mentored because this is my first time teaching at a collegiate level um, but I'm excited about it and I think we'll have fun learning together and so that's just a little bit um, the backstory of me just wanted to go over the look at the studio policy thing first I think that's probably one of the most important um, documents there um, of things a list of materials that you uh, will need. Um, the first one you'll see is the Blaylock Vocal Exercise PDF and MP3s. Uh, this is going to be probably the core curriculum, you might say, of, of some things that we'll be working on technique. And so it, it is $30. You do purchase it online at nwivoice.com. Um, it's been a while since I went to the website and did that, but you do have to enter a password in order to get there um, after you've put in like credit card information or so forth, right? Well, to get to where you can actually add yeah. your card. Right. right. To the card. You have to put, so... put a password in. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want just everybody accessing it. And that password is, does it work? Does it get results? Does it get results? And okay, that's small it. Small caps, no question mark at the end, um, all together. No spaces. No spaces. And no spaces. So does it get results? Does it get results? That's the password. No spaces, no capitalization, no punctuation. If you enter that, then you will go to the shopping cart where you can add it. Um, there's a male exercise and there's female. So obviously pick the right one that applies to you. And uh, it is $30, but it will be something that you will use probably throughout your voice lessons here at Liberty for all four years. So. Um, yeah. Could I have Absolutely, you please know, do. I would also, you know, maybe if you do get it before you meet with Mr. Hagland, don't do them. Like you won't know what you're doing. Yes. So wait for instruction before, you know, you might want to wait until you actually have instruction before you purchase it. That might be the yeah. safest way to do it. Good idea. Because you'll be tempted. You'll, I don't know, you may not even know what to start with. So wait yep. until he's giving you some instruction in what to do. And then purchase them. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, if you can't resist temptation to like hit play on the MP3s, just wait until our lesson. Hopefully, let, just an update on the timeline. Hopefully, HR will have my paperwork complete and we can start 
probably not next week is at least what I've been told, but maybe the week after. I'm really hoping it's going to happen then. Yeah. Um, also, there's going to be, um, you may be asked to purchase sheet music um, for songs. Um, the requirement, we'll get to that in a minute from the syllabus, we'll be working on four songs across the semester. Um, and so it, it'd be good to to have access. And there's there's a list of websites. Uh, musicnotes.com is one. Depending on your major and what songs we're going to be working towards, we'll either be working. I know that there's a lot of a lot of you are music theater majors, or, and so we'll gear things some of the things more towards that. There's also some free resources for classical stuff, and we'll go over those as well. Uh, a three uh, three ring binder, an inch. Um, doesn't have to be super thick, just to keep your materials, practice sheets, sheet music, other things for the class together. That's that's probably no no surprise. I don't think I have any jazz students, so you don't have to worry about the jazz handbook. Um, recommended things. Uh, there's a, a if you have a, most people have a smartphone. If you don't, um, that's fine. But typically, there's a free app of some sort for a metronome. It helps um, as we're working on um, just feeling the pulse and the meter and. and uh, so that's helpful. Also, um, a free piano app, Virtuoso Piano Free is, is a good app. Uh, um, it gives you, you know, the ability, if you're in your dorm and you don't have access to a piano, it just gives you a pitch reference, sort of like a modern-day pitch pipe. Um, you can also check intervals, like, oh, what's that melody? You can kind of plunk out a little melody. So that way, if you don't have access to the practice room, you can't get into one or... You're snowed in, or whatever it is. Um, you, know, you can yeah. use uh, that app. It's you know great. Also, Singer's Saving Grace. I have a bottle that I carry with me in my computer bag. Um, just it tastes nasty, honestly, but uh, it's an herbal throat spray that helps if your voice is tired, if it's dry feeling. So that's a uh, you can order that online. It's not required, but just recommended. And then the second page, you'll see a list of recommended websites for purchasing. Music. There's also translations. Um, we'll probably be doing some songs in Italian. Um, uh, the sheet music lib lib.com. Um, uh, you can go to that website and search class classical repertoire um, and download a, a sheet music viewer to your computer, and you can transpose it. It'll even play the accompaniment for you. It's kind of computer generated straight but it, it might work for practicing. Um, musicnotes.com, again, is a, is a great website for songs. Worshiptogether.com is another great website for uh, worship music lead sheets. Um, if you're a music worship major, um, we prefer to not just have you know, the lyrics with a chord symbol above it. We want you to actually you know, be working with at least a lead sheet that has the, the staff and the melody line um, and so forth. Worship Together has a lot of lead sheets that are free. So that's a good resource. Praisecharts.com, I th think they may have some free resources there. Otherwise, um, you can buy things directly from them on a per song basis. Of course, Amazon, if there's any books um, that you need to purchase, anthologies like a um, Broadway song anthology or a classical music um, anthology. Um, Sheet Music Plus is another one, sort of like Music Notes. Art Song Center, you can go through. There's there's a lot of these different things um, that are available to you. I won't read them all. Um, so again, our, our everybody that's that I'll I'll be teaching. I have 12 students. They're all one credit uh, students. So uh, the minimum hours of practice per week is four hours for either 122 or 121 students. Um, we're gonna have uh, we'll have a, a weekly sheet. Um, so that you can track your practice time, and um, when you come in to the le to the studio, you'll sign in um, and um, put on there your practice time and so forth. And we'll work through some of those resources out. But um, so four hours a week is is totally doable, um, and especially you'll have some exercise exercises that you can do that we're working on technique, but then also you'll be working on the songs. So yeah. Um, and you can read the rest of that. Um, you know, take good care of your voice. Don't run it into the ground. Don't try to cram four hours in on one day, the day before your lesson. You know, spread it out, uh, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Um, 
recording. Most of us, if we have a smartphone, you have the recording ability. If you have that, that's great. If not, it is required that you have a way to record your lesson. If you want to use a laptop or a tablet or your phone, or if you want to go buy one of those little digital recording devices, whatever it is, it, it, trust me, it will help you if you record our lessons every week. I'm also going to re be recording them, but that's really for my benefit. I, audio files are, you know, it's not the easiest thing to email an audio file, especially a half hour long. So if you record it, I'll have it to record. I can go back and listen, make references or notes of, and things. Um, there are free recording programs. Audacity is free for Mac and PC. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities. But most of us have smartphones with pretty high capacity if you don't have a bunch of Instagram photos or something on there. <laughs> um, and you can record directly on that. So I uh, highly recommend that. Um, there will be an expectation to do some research to study your songs. Um, if it's in a foreign language, we want you to know what you're singing. Don't just get up and spout spout the Italian that you heard on the recording. You know, know what you're singing so you can emote the, the meaning of the song um, and, and know something about the song. And, and some possible questions are listed there. I'm not going to read through them. Um, but, you know, put some thought, some research into the... You only got four songs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Speaking of being dry, I'm going to grab my water. But, um, yeah, have, um, have an idea of what the song... When, what period it was written, um, some of those things. I uh, won't read through all those questions, but take a look at that. I'm not, we're not going to expect you to have an answer for every one of those necessarily, but you know, it would be, it'd be good it, it, as it impacts uh, the song um, and studying the song to know the background and so forth. So, all right. Um, you can look through the, the rubric, um, the grading. Not going to read through everything. It's all there. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. Um, but you'll be graded on your artistic progress. This is a very, very much, uh, we're going to set a baseline and see how you improve from that. Everybody's going to have a different baseline when they come in. That's fine. What we're interested in is the progress as an artist, uh, in your voice, in your technique, um, and um, making music out of it, your preparation. Um, how much time, practice time, and all of those things. You can read through and see what the expectations are um, for the different numbers. Um, and that's how we'll be scoring really each lesson um, to make sure that um, we're, we're progressing along. And we're all going to have you know ebbs and flows and how things go. The next page, um, you'll want to know, um, and I don't have a list here, um, but we will provide you a list. You are going to need an accompanist. Okay. Um, if you're a music theater student, you will have one jury at the end of the semester. Um, you'll sing one song. So um, you get the, probably the easiest thing. Music and worship students, you're going to have two. One somewhere in the middle where you do a, a worship song, and then one at the end, which is either a Broadway or a classical song. Correct? Is it, or is it so just classical? Worship, we kind of focus on classical at the end. Okay. Because we want to be sure getting trained in that sure but you certainly can sing as a theater part of your training yeah other, other other four songs yeah yeah question what do you do like like i'm right now i'm a commercial music songwriting would that okay. fall under the same thing as worship um what is the yeah what i typically do for songwriting is i'll have them sing on my worship jury okay like i have a few jazz study students and they'll sing on it even if they sing a jazz song, let's say. I'm a little flexible with it. So they do the same schedule as the, the worship students? I typically the two of them. will operate that way. Okay. Yeah. And typically, most songwriters are kind of worship oriented, typically. Right. So it's something they like anyway. So. Yeah, I think uh, the three students types that I have music theater, mm -hmm. music and worship, and then the commercial songwriting, I think, are the three, if I remember right. So. Um, but you will need an accompanist. Um, for lessons, um, if you play guitar or if you play piano, um, you know, we'll let you try that. But if, if we're constantly focused on it, well, you're not playing the right chord here, and it get, get, we're not going to get into how you play the guitar, how you play the piano. We're going to want to be able to focus on you singing. And so 
four four lessons. You know, either I can accompany worship song. I can do enough of that by chords to get an idea of how you sing. Or we sing a cappella. We'll do some things. But four, you will need an accompanist when we get closer. Probably at least no less than two lessons before your jury. So be planning for how that's going to work out. Um, and we'll provide you a list of qualified accompanists. Um, for that if you have a friend or somebody that is on your hall or um, you have other access and they're not in that list what's the policy on that well, I think it's okay I have found that sometimes the friend doesn't work out so well yeah because, um, they may not be at a skill level that you right. really need so we may be okay if you say hey I do have a friend she's really good at whatever uh, Mr. Hagelin may say well bring them in and we'll kind of have a test run right um, 90 percent of the time when that's happened to me I've had to kind of say I don't think that's gonna work so but sometimes it does yeah. so I don't want to be absolute on it but I think mr. Hagman has the last word on yeah the recommended list is the first go-to right yeah. and they are um, they're compensated so right you have to check with there'll be emails on there and you'll need to email them um, and there's a way you can go about it we can talk about that but you want to, you know, ask them what they charge, and you certainly can email a bunch, and do some shopping, and then find out what what you're okay with. Right. You know, so it's a free system, I guess, is what I'm saying. So some may charge a little more based yeah. on their level of experience and how they play, and some may be less. It depends on their own fee, but we allow them to set their own fees. So you'll have the the point is you'll have to take some ownership of that yeah. of finding your accompanist. So. Um, all right, and um, yeah, so um, everything needs to be memorized for your juries anytime that you're presenting. Um, so there'll be a process that we go through to make sure that you know we're we're at that point um, through throughout the semester. Um, and you can see the kind of the timeline there. Um, and uh, all right. Any questions so far just on that document? On the everybody has the, the way to get the exercises. Again, if you want to hold off, you don't have to go back to your dorm and buy that tonight. You can um, you can actually probably wait till our first lesson or after our first lesson. I can teach you some things to do, um, give you an assignment to do from the less from that and then go go buy it and, and run that. Because I, I have the the exercises on my computer so we can use them and I can teach them to you in your first lesson and then you'll go and we'll start with just a couple of those lessons so all right that's the studio policy uh, sheet um, who here is in 121 okay all right so all four of you um, Ben you can just kind of I think it should be pretty much there's think, there's there's not a lot of changes. There's there's not a lot of difference. Yeah. Pretty much the syllabus yeah. the same. Yeah. Um some of you this is your first time with private voice lessons and some of you it's not, and that's fine. Um there's no real um there are some prerequisites. I'm not gonna read all of this. Um I've given you the materials list that's pretty much in the um in the, the sheet that we just went through, um, the learning outcomes we're gonna we're gonna work on breathing. That's you know that's important. Uh, there'll be technique, diction, musicianship, performance, all of those things. It's kind of a progression that'll build on it. We're gonna start with the fundamentals with with breathing and so forth and working through technique. Um, I had you fill out if you haven't already. I've had you fill out a little evaluation of your own voice, so that you can, I can kind of get a little bit of an idea of where you're at. Oh, I I, I really feel like I have. I don't have enough power. I need want to expand my range or some of those things. And so those are the things that we'll be working through. And the exercises really help with those things. Uh, some folks, you know, may feel like they uh, have all lower register and no upper. Some folks feel like they have all upper and no lower. So we'll work through all of that to develop the entire instrument all the way through. So um, Repertoire requirements, I think I mentioned this. Uh, we'll be working on four songs um, throughout across the semester. Um, <clears throat> depending what your major is, you may actually only have the jury on one song if you're uh, music theater. If you're commercial music or worship music, you'll have two. Um, we talked about the practice hours, 
everybody know when I say jury? Do you, anybody know what that is? Okay, so it's sort of like a mini recital, um, and um, so I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for the worship thing, they they pick the song and then they sing that for the the jury. Yeah, I mean you're always the with worship song for guidance. So when you're selecting your four songs at the beginning with Mr. Hagler, um, you work on all of it. All of it needs to be learned for the semester, even though you might only present, let's like, say you work on two worship songs, you only pick one to sing on that jury, and that can be based on how you feel like it's going. You might feel like this one's going better, this is, I feel more comfortable with this one. You also may agree, yeah, I think you're doing better with this one, because it is graded. And, right. Uh, so you, you so the voice faculty will be there, myself. And with worship, um, he will ask one other faculty member to be present at the worship jury. And at the end of the semester, typically it's three to four uh, faculty in a room, so it's a little bit more at the end. Okay. So. And at the last one, the classical one, mm -hmm. um, is it the the voice faculty or, or maybe me gets to pick which song, or is that? Well, if they're doing one song, basically you come in with the one you want okay. to sing. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, other make some other majors may need to do two. They pick their first one, and, and then, then the, we look at their that's list right. and we say sing that one. Okay. But for you guys, you'll just come in. You'll know. Song. Yeah, you're gonna know you'll before know. going in. You're gonna Good. sing that song. Okay. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. So a yeah. pianist is required for those. Um, so that's definitely, as I mentioned, I do want to make sure that that is the case. Also, there's a number of school of music events that are required. Um, I'll let you read through that. There's um, the studio class. Um, and we're probably going to be combined because I, my, my availability is limited. Um, we'll probably combine with Dr. Greenwald's studio class. Um, and the, the dates and t the times are, are down on that. I will do my best to be here for that. Um, but since it's my first time, we're going to kind of combine those uh, for this semester. Um, and then also there are encore recitals. And those... Dates are listed. Those are required attendance. Now, I know some of you, um, maybe some of you that aren't here tonight that are watching a video, you're involved in a sports team or other things, we'll have to work some of those details out. You may have to ask to be excused to be at some of those. Um, and then there are uh, vocal recitals <clears throat> listed there. Um, just for clarification, are all of those required or a certain number of no, them? I That's what I thought. Number, I think for number five, Okay. Um, so your your requirement is if you're a major, so theater majors, you're not a school of music major. So really, this is not a requirement for a theater major or a music minor. Now, okay. sometimes we would like us, all our students to like go to the studio class, but not always because I usually have theater students that are actually in the show and they're rehearsing almost every night. But majors need to go to the two studio classes you need to go to two vocal recital dates, that's just voice, and one encore recital. Okay. And an encore recital is based on area recitals. That could be a guitarist, a pianist, a vocalist, a harpist, and a percussionist all in one recital who did really well on their piece in their area recital, and their professor recommends them to perform in the encore, which means, you know, let's hear it again. Um, so that's what that's all about. But five things. Okay. Yep. And for 121 level people, you do not have to perform in the vocal yeah. area recital. But if you're 122 and above and you're a vocal uh, school of music major, you do perform in an area recital. Okay. Well, I will learn more about yeah. that. <laughs> it, it takes time to kind of get our heads around that. Because um, some of that's a lot newer than what, what I went through and so forth. So exactly. Back lots in the day. Of, lots of things have changed. Okay. All right. You can see the grading policy there. Um, there's a weekly lesson grade that totals 540 points. It's what, 45 points 45 per, week. per week. So based on the rubric that we looked at earlier, you'll have a score of anywhere from 0 to 45, hopefully not 0. Um, and um, that will total, uh, if you get 45s each week, it'll be 540. That's based on 12 lessons, okay? Um, if we can get more lessons in, we will, but starting late, that may be a challenge. Um, I do know that I have one week in April that I will be at a conference with our church. So we'll have, I will, that's on me, so I will reschedule that with you 
if you have a situation where you have to miss, you're sick or whatever, I'll try to make it up. Um, but we do have to have 12 lessons to have a grade. So um, if you skip and cut, then I don't technically have to make that up. Um, um, and it, it could impact your your score. Um, there's a memorization score, your jury score, and then this uh, other thing, incomplete studio class, voice and encore, those are those things that we talked about, the, the two studio classes, the two uh, recitals, and, and, and the five things, basically. So if you don't complete all of those, that's 100 points off your score for a total of 1,000 points. Uh, you can see the grading scale there. Um, yeah. Attendance policies down here uh, on the, the next page. Um, since this is a one credit hour class per semester, you have one cut, basically, that you can go, yeah, I'm going to blow off Mr. Hagelin's lesson today. I don't advise that, but technically by university policy, you have the freedom to do that. You're adults. You're almost anyway. You are. And you're paying for this. It's your dime. Um, if you're sick, um, again, we can we can still do a lesson. I'm not worried. I'm not a germaphobe. If you can still sing, we can still work on some things. If you are throwing up, we probably don't want you in our studio. Um, if you have a fever, you know, use your common sense. Um, if it draws out, you know, I may ask for a doctor's note. I'm not going to require one if you miss one because you're sick. Um, thank you to I forget who who the student was they tech they emailed me a copy of a doctor's note because they were sick to miss tonight so yeah. great kudos so that's wonderful if you want to do that that's great um we will try to make that up though if it's uh we because we, we do want to have 12 lessons um you can read through the attendance policy i'm not going to read it all for you um but other is there anything that we need to highlight from I that think i would just you know say uh, you know if it's unexcused meaning like I went to work on my math homework or I slept or whatever it is other than a sickness or possibly family emergency. We, we try to understand those things. Um, like you said, you get one freebie, but if you do a second unexcused absence, like there's really no reason to have missed that class, it is 100 points off your score for the second one. Yeah. If it's unexcused. It usually doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, if you're really, uh, I always find that students really want to learn. Mm -hmm. and they want to be at their lessons, and you're really mostly upset if you can't be there. So it wouldn't really happen, but it's just there just in case it does. Once in a while it does. Right. So. Also that plays into this is tardiness. Um, um, if you are 10 minutes late to showing up, it can, can, it can count as an absence. If you are within those 10 minutes three times, like say three lessons in a row or three lessons across the semester, you're, you're five minutes late, that can count as a miss, as, as, a, as an absence. So keep an eye on that. Uh, try to be on time. If you are you know, running late for some reason, I have a very limited schedule. I'll be here basically four hours Monday, four hours Tuesday, four hours Thursday. So my lessons are back to back to back to back each of those days. If you are running late, please shoot me a text. Hey, I'm coming. I'm going to be late. My number's been on the, most of the emails. I, I don't mind if you have my personal number, and as long as you don't you know, prank me in the middle of the night. My phone goes on do not disturb anyway, so <laughs> I won't get it anyway. So, But you can shoot me a text, say, hey, I am coming. I'm sorry. I'm going to be late. Um, just to let me know so I'm not like, well, I guess, you know, if you're the last lesson of the day and nobody shows up and it's quarter after, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home. <laughs> okay, so let me know. Um, typically, you know, if I don't hear from a student, I'll kind of give it like 10 minutes, you know, maybe sure. 15 minutes just to be gracious. But if we don't know that you're coming and it's that much time and it is the last lesson, you know, he can go. Likewise, if you were sitting around and 10 and I'm not or, here. <laughs> yeah, let's say you're waiting for 10 or 15 minutes and you don't see your professor, you might say, well, I'm, I'm going to go. But do wait. Like, I find so, one time I was late for a student for like five minutes for some reason. I think I had a meeting. They left. Like, it was just five minutes. So, And I'm a good communicator, so I usually let people know if I'm going to miss for some reason. So 
on both sides we need to yes. you know wait a little bit if for some reason you never know what's happening so we both try to wait so yeah communication I that's guess, right is the main thing that's right there's dress code. You can read that. It's in the Liberty Way. Honor code, same thing. Confidentiality. I mean, if you talk to me about something that could, you know, there's, you know, you can read that. Um, um, other websites um, that are beneficial there. Um, going on, the calendar. Um, this is just kind of a... Um, an idea of a timeline for you that we'll try to follow in, in, based on our lessons. Um, and so you can look that over, um, the things that we'll be working towards. And again, um, there's a list of School of Music required events. You can skip over fall of 2017 and just look at spring of 2018. Um, the main thing there is the um, night of worship uh, that's coming up um, April 15th and the rehearsals for that. So. It is huge, you know, to be at those night of worship rehearsals. And I forget what the current penalty is. I know people had to used to have to write papers. I don't know if they still have that. I don't know what the current thing is because I don't teach the choir. So, and if you're not in a choir, I think there are scheduled rehearsals that you just have to show up in so you can be learning the music. But it's an all school of music event, no matter what your major is. It's cool. And it is a very good event. So if it's your first time, it's pretty significant. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, any any questions or anything that I missed, Dr. Greenwald? Anything? I think I think that's fair. Okay. And, you know, leave, the details will come as we go. Right, because I'll I'll learn more about yeah. what I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Or if you have a question, yeah. I always tell students, don't let a week go by between lessons. Um, if you have something you're not understanding or mm -hmm. if you forgot something. A week is a long time, and if there's something we can help you with midweek or something that we can help clear it up, that's better for you because then you're not going a whole week misunderstanding something. Right. So I find that communication is really key because we may communicate thinking we've made it clear. You may have played good student and shook your head like, yes, I get it, and then you leave, and then you... you what did he say? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we think you might have gotten it, and maybe you didn't. So let us know if you didn't. Um, we're here yep. to help always. Yep. So we want to see you succeed Thanks, yeah. and do well and advance in your your craft, your art. So, Delaney, right? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know what room we're going to be in? Yet? No, I don't. I think they're still working out details of who's teaching where. Okay. Um, it's possible he could be in a practice room down at the very low level. Um, yes. It's that that's. Worst case, that'll be. <laughs> worst case, well, I taught in the practice room my first year. That's not back a bad. In the day when the Davis place was here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Duff. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Duff. Mr. Yeah. Lambert teaches there. They did that last semester. Um, it's workable, and you know you're gonna learn. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. So my guess is there, unless something else comes up. I'm not but, gonna have a cushy studio like but Dr. He's Greenwald. Going to, yeah. We all start somewhere, That's right. um, but um, he will communicate as soon as. As he... soon as I know something, I will I will let you know yeah. by email. Um, I still have, I believe, one student I have not heard anything from, so I don't know. I got to check to make sure maybe the email that I got was not correct and yeah, they're not getting it or it what. Because there is what we call um, if twenty one days goes by and there's no like let's say you don't attend a lesson for three three weeks more than three weeks, let's say, well, let's even say it's business days. 21 days goes by, he hasn't heard from you, he hasn't seen you. By the 21st day, that can be considered an FN, meaning failure because of non-attendance, which again, typically does not happen, but if you do miss, the best thing to do is just send an email as soon as you can. If you're really sick and you can't get to anything to communicate with him, that's fine, but as soon as you can, Tell him, hey, I'm so sorry I missed. This is what happened. So that he knows and your intention is looking forward to next week or something like that. Right. That's all we do. <clears throat> yeah. But absolutely. we don't want it to go so long and if we don't hear from you, we do worry. You know, we, we hope that you're okay. It's, it's more than just they sh you should be there. We, 
we do get concerned about our students. So we want to make sure, I hope something didn't happen. Right. But if 21 days goes by and there's no communication and you have not come to a lesson, technically we can submit a failure of non-attendance if we just haven't heard from you. Okay? But again. Yeah, so don't do that. Happens. Any other questions? Yes, Ben. I kind of lost me on the, uh, what's required in terms of studio classes, area recitals, encore recitals. Yes, that still, I don't know, for some reason, it does get confusing. What, are, what's your major? I'm a theater major. Theater, it, then forget it. Okay, yeah. I'm 122, was there anything? No, okay. no, so the theater, so though those were designed for School of Music majors. Okay. And the, it was because we wanted to provide more performing opportunities for music majors. Okay. And that's not because we don't want theater majors. I mean, usually you guys are doing a lot anyway. Yeah. And you're usually right. very, very busy, as far as I can tell. So, um, so you don't have to really worry about that requirement. Okay. He's not going to dock your score by 100 points. Right. We do, I do like students to come to the studio class if you're available. Yeah. So if you don't have a rehearsal on those dates, um, feel free to come. It's a learning experience. But the encore recital yeah. dates and the vocal recital dates are not required for the music Or a theater major okay. or a music minor. Gotcha. School of Music. Yes. So if you're a BM music major, a BS worship major, that is required for you. Yep. And just keep up on the syllabus with the dates. And I always tell students, plan ahead when you're going to go. Do not wait till the last no. date. Because you don't know what's going to happen on that day. You might get really sick. You might even just forget about it because you're so busy. So I just say, let's. you just go ahead and plot the date and do it sooner than later because it gives you leeway. And it always gets busier as the semester goes along. Yeah. So people always like to not have to fulfill all these requirements at the tail end of the semester. So. Any other questions? All right, if you have a question that comes up, don't hesitate to ask it. There's no stupid questions, email me. And I'll do the best I can to respond very quickly. Yes. So on the day when we find out we can meet with you, it's in the next like two weeks. Yes. We should come having four songs prepared. No. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> good question. She's a good one. <laughs> we will work on that. Like, uh, tell me your major again. I'm a commercial music. Commercial music. Okay, so you're sort of like the the music and worship. So we'll probably work. We'll pick together. Um, uh, now, what about like a, since she's a songwriter, would we do potentially an original music song? Yeah, uh, if, if you're working so. on a song, I'm very happy to work with singers on their own songs. So if you have something you feel like it's it's going to be ready, you don't want to have something that's all, it's finished by week eight. You know, if you have a song that you've written and it's ready to go by the time you meet with him, sure, I've done yeah. that all the time. I guess what I would recommend is think of ideas. It, yeah, be thinking of, of some things. You know that you would be interested in. If you're a theater major, think of some theater songs you've always wanted to do. Um, bring those ideas at your first lesson, and you can that kind of moves that discussion along. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, you can look at the uh, the calendar. I didn't read through it, but the calendar kind of has has a little more time. Uh, so really, lesson two. Um, we're going to begin working on song one, and then we're not going to. We're, it's not going to be that we we're, we work song one to death, and then we add song two. They're going to be in various stages of development as we go. So, yeah. yeah so that you know, the last song doesn't get added. You know, two lessons before you got to sing it. So, we'll be we'll we'll build that in pretty quickly across. Um, probably by by lesson five, we'll have we'll definitely know all the all the songs and be working on them at various stages. So, good question, though. Another helpful tip, just as you're thinking about song choices, sometimes this might seem obvious, but um, typically it's best if girls pick girl tunes, yes. girl-type songs, and guys, obviously guy songs. Obviously theater, it's kind of categorized that way by the show and the character, and that's. but there has sometimes like um, you sing the wrong kind of song for your voice, um, or let's say you're a theater major and you really want to learn to belt, and you pick a song that's that you're not strong enough to, to do that particular belt piece quite yet. Just be careful, and Mr. Hagwin can guide yeah. you on it. There are there are songs you can learn to belt on that don't belt as high. Um, you have to get stronger yep. uh, before you can do some of these pieces, and you have to see what kind of voice you really are. 
you know, it's it's hard to know. And, and it's hard to, because you see, well, so-and-so does this, and I really want to do that, but you're not them. Yep. So that's a recommendation, because guys' tunes are written in a different way, where the guys are in their powerhouse singing those top notes, and it sits different in the girl's voice. Yep. So it's just, as you're looking at worship songs, it's a, it's a really good recommendation to consider. Yep, and he can I guide agree. you when you bring your ideas. But if you're bringing girls, sometimes gravitate towards guys' songs. It's just kind of the way it goes. And then they sit there, and I want to do Chris Tomlin, and I want to do this. And we're like, no, that, that's not going to be the best for your development. Yep. And there's a lot of choices out there. So. Yep. All right. Um, I think that's it. If you have any questions, thanks for watching by video. If you... Uh, Took the time to watch this 40-minute video, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.